He wound up going to jail. I wound up going to college. So y'all got to listen to these stories because it's going to get crazy now because if you think about it, look, Mia, you talking, I started, I started hanging out with my kids, like literally, like went and got my daughters, put them together. They ain't never met. Mia was six. Janae was three. Brought them together. And, yo, I started taking them out on weekends on the train. Like I would go get them from their mother's house. I told their mothers, like, listen, I ain't got no money and I ain't hustling no more. So mm. I'm gonna come pick them up when I can. Um, right. If you wanna, if you wanna donate to us going out, that's cool. I'm not gonna ask you for nothing, but I'm coming to get my daughters. And they yeah. was down with me. It's crazy that they bought into them. listening to Parables from the Project. I am Mia Hall. And I am Gorgeous Gordy from Brownsville. What up, baby? Never ran, never will. Ah, not yes. me, baby. <laughs> yes. yes. What yes. up, what up? He ran sometimes. He ran sometimes. But yes, yeah, so we are back again with another episode. And thank you for everybody who tuned in to all of the last episodes. But even before we get into what's going on, like we said in the last episode, on the 19th of this month of August, we are coming to Brooklyn. Live. And some of the Live. Live and direct. direct in your town, in my town. Okay, 593 okay. Washington Avenue, baby, B there, B square. You heard, so you're going to have to get tickets, okay? So make sure you check out miahall19 forward slash podcast dot com forward slash podcast in order to find out where you can get tickets. Follow us on Instagram at Parables from the Project and find out how to get your tickets before they sell out. We have limited space, so you know you want to make sure you get your tickets right now. Get your tickets uh, now. Because the place yeah, is small, tickets. so it's going to get sold out. So if you want to see or want to want to be part of, we got some special guests, you know, uh, let's just have a good time, man. Just get, have a good time on first um, live, live taping. Let's make it happen, y'all. Let's make it happen. Let's make it something big and something special. Yes, make it big, make it special. We can't wait to see you. We can't wait to meet, you know, maybe some listeners that we haven't met before. You know, if you found our podcast. Um, through a friend and that being said my favorite phrase share this with a friend uh, we love it when you take a screenshot share it on your stories don't forget to mention uh, the podcast and you can mention at me underscore hall 19 or at gorgeous gordy nine all right let's keep on getting into it Dad, how was your week? What's going on? My week is so bananas, y'all. I mean, like, <clears throat> uh, like I told, I think in the last episode, how my job is crazy, and so my story from the story to the job. So, the reason why this week is this is going to be my thing on for this week is because I went on a retreat. You know, went on like a two day retreat. You know, up in Westchester, the, the job paid for hotel room and stuff some professional development, but so I'm an OG now on the job, and it's so crazy because I was an OG in the group home, and I had to help people along the way. I was an OG on Rackets Island. I had to save dudes from getting robbed. I was an OG up north that my fourth month, I became a third squad leader. So you got to, you got to, <laughs> man, you put this together, man. I'm telling you, man, little hard work, man, is some some kind words, you know what I'm saying? And just understand that on um, right against life, like you got bridges and tunnels, you got you could go to Jersey anyway. My job has a retreat, but I'm an OG on the job and like so dude so we, we break up in the groups. I mean if you have a job and you understand people go on retreat for professional development or if you don't, it's a professional development. They want they want the job starts growing and they want their employees to be better at customer service or better at getting along with each other. You know, becoming one because you're, my job is going from from one school, one tiny K to five school to now we got five, we got seven K to eight schools with fourteen buildings. So, and I'm the director of facilities, which is crazy because I'm an excellent, you know, ex drug addict, ex all that. Now I'm a comedian, 
And I just got on stage, had a good show last Saturday. Let's big shout out to Mike Troy. You can follow him at Zero, Mike Troy Zero Zero, Diva Comedy. You can follow her at Diva Comedy. You know, they, they be helping me out in the game. Michelle, Michelle. Um, yeah, so I got mad support to do comedy. I got mad support to, at my job because, you know, as the groups we split up into, they had to, you know, they was asking me questions, but they didn't, they didn't really know my story. So we got to know each other a little more intimate. You know, it's like they got to know that I, that I, that I built, that I, that I renovated the first school. Now, the school's been, been in play for like 15, 16 years. But now it's grew from one to like you know, 14. Like we got seven schools now, 14 buildings, but we open school every year. So they got the, they was in awe with the story. So it's crazy to see regular working people. So some of them, you know, kind of like in their 20s, but most of them is in their 30s or 40s or something like that. But, you know, they look up to me, and it's crazy to have somebody look at me like as a role model like that. Not that I'm shooting for that, because oh, I, I joke, but I work hard. But anyway, that's my story because I came from somewhere that you would have never thought my life would turn out the way it is now. Yeah, so that's my big takeover. My, my big thing this week was this retreat and how people, you know, received my words or received just the wisdom that I even told them. You know, it wasn't even nothing big. I was like, yo, just work hard. The, the, um, the owner here has a vision that's bananas and everybody can make some money take care of their families and don't have to, like, be scrap, be scrambling to put some savings away, to buy a house. Just a, a nice thing to tell, you know, some people who, who's coming out of bad situation at their workplace. Now, I'm coming from the street, so these people don't even, the, the stories is crazy to them. I yield my time. <laughs> no. Y'all seen the debates? <laughs> oh, my God, that's a joke. We ain't never getting into that. <laughs> I mean, we will, but it would be jokes. But anyway, that's my week. Wow. Um, that was a big revelation, though. Um, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. So, yeah, you, you are always, like, you know, the OG. Like, I'm sure even on the, I mean, you know, at the church with the... Um, yeah, I put in my time. Service. I put in my time, and I put... And I, and I, and I do it. I do the best that... It's crazy that I wasn't like this. So this is, that's why the story... Well, that's, I think, why we're doing the podcast, y'all, because... Yeah, you could change. People, people can change. But what's Absolutely. up with your week, girl? What are you doing out there in L.A.? Oh, man. Doing what I'm doing, what I'm doing. So, yes, had a great week. Was able to go to church on Sunday. Praise God. Um, had an awesome service. I worked on a story, pulled an all-nighter that I haven't done in a while. So I worked on a story all night long on um, Tuesday. And that was fun because it was um, a good show that I enjoyed, Dear White People, which comes out on Netflix on Friday. Y'all probably will be, might be listening to this at another time, but that's when it comes out. So I did a recap and I watched all the first two seasons. But I'm also, I feel like one of the things is, I mean, planning our live podcast, that's been fun. Um, definitely looking forward to coming back to NYC. I haven't been home since Christmas. So it's going to be fun to come back. But I've been listening to Can't Hurt Me, uh, David Goggins' book. And that's been very interesting, just, of course, like the pain that he endured and, you know, how he really talks about everything is a mindset. And, of course, it's things that, you know, we've heard before, we know, you know, the Bible talks about. But to hear it again and to hear somebody else's story of it, it gives me a different perspective and it adds to, um, I guess when I'm getting tired, it adds to the amount of stories that I have of people who have overcome fatigue and who have overcome other things. So um, just like you said, too, like with this podcast, I hope that, you know, our stories of overcoming uh, will also help other people to be able to think back to, you know, maybe stories that we shared one day. And it'll help them to not give up on something that they're doing, right? Uh, he talks about, like, callousing the mind, like, just really pushing past doubt, pushing past fear, and, you know, and not giving up and really finishing uh, what you set out to do. Oh, yeah, so that was, like, that's, that's been on my mind. I've been listening to it, having long commutes. Um, so I've been listening to my books on my commute. And, um, and it was good. It was good. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to next week, too. Uh, when I come back home, I'm going to the Verified Conference. Uh, well, we're going to the Verified Conference, so we're definitely going to have to, you know, do some some live taping there. Yeah, looking forward to the Verified Conference next week. Y'all can still get tickets at VerifiedConference.com. So our next segment is... 
Miss Terribles of the day, the moment you all been waiting for. In the last podcast, we talked about um, the boot camp and all of the stories and situations that led up to you being able to go into the shock program. So shock, yeah, that was definitely the catalyst for it. That definitely jump-started a, a whole way I work, the way I talk, the way I treat people. And we're going to go back to that, and um, we're going to have a recap, I guess, of all of the, all of the stories, because you got to know that each day was a story. We're going to definitely jump back in it, but uh, we're going to try to move this thing on. So I know that shock had a great impact on you. But I also know that you said you tried to leave, like, a few times. What happened there? Shock has a lot of, like, shock is real. Like, it's real life. And, and somebody took a study and figured that if you, if you make somebody do something for six months, that it sticks with them or something. Like, you could, you could create a habit in somebody, whether it's good or bad. So shock, you don't have, everybody wears the same thing. There's no, you can't get no better sneakers than the next dude. Everybody's got these night track sneakers that they only let you buy. Everybody's got the same amount of socks, the same amount of underwear, the same amount of blankets, towels, the same amount of soap. And you keep your lockers, so everything had to be, like, like on point. And I used to smoke cigarettes back then. And they, they don't let you smoke cigarettes when, when you want a cigarette. Like, if, if, if everybody did everything right during the day, like, if, they, if your lockers were straight, and you get a check every day. So you're very rebellious when you first start, and you don't care. You'll, like, leave your bed messed up, or you'll try to cheat on a PT. You start getting caught, and then they, they'll, make, they'll make the rest of the dorm pay for your mistake. So say, say it's time for a smoke break. So you get ready to go smoke your cigarette, and somebody in the dorm will make a sound or something. Like, because when you have a smoke break, there's no talking. You just smoke your cigarettes. And, and they, they, you pass around a butt can, and and that's it. Like, but if somebody, like, talk, like, if you hear a dude go, or he'll ask his friend, yo, you got a cigarette, they'll be like, all right, cut them short. They'll make you clip the cigarettes, throw them on the ground, and put them in the butt can, and that's it. No more smoke break for the rest of the day. So after that happens a couple of times, you get really mad. It'll be like, later for that, send me back to jail. So, because you want to smoke your cigarettes and plus. You, there's no freedom in shock. So there's a different drill instructor that comes in, and every minute of the day, you're on a watch. Like, you have something to do. It'd be like you have to go to a program. You have to do, you got to do these skits. It's a real program. But anyway, so I tried to quit three times. Normally when, they, when you try to quit, they let you quit. So you'll see a guy standing by a clock with handcuffs on for like 10 hours straight because they don't, they, 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 when, when you say you're quitting or they kick you out, they put you and make the whole, the whole dorm see you. They make everybody see you in the yard waiting for the van to take you back to regular jail. So it's kind of, it's, it's a real impact. Like you'll go to child, the guy will still be standing by the clock and they make you stand by the clock so you can watch how slow time really goes. But anyway, some mental stuff, whatever, but it works. So I tried to quit, but it'd be these guys that like, I mean, the deep, the, some drill instructors, Saw something in uh, this is these are all true stories and I hope it's documented that you know my name is probably in that. But anyway, I tried to quit, but this drill so so say I'll be waiting by that clock and one of the drill instructors that knew me from my dorm just was like Keela, like they call you know because they get to know you. These guys is real drill instructors in the army. You say what you doing there? Go back to your dorm and I'd be like, sir, you know you still in military. I think what gave them a hint like when you try to quit and you still saying sir <laughs> like. So it'll be like, oh, this dude don't really want to quit, but you got you to gotta look tough in front of your friend. So he'll send me back to my dorm. The, the drill and stuff will be like, Who, why are you back here, Keelan? And I'll be like, yo, D. Albanic said to come back here, sir, you know, whatever, sir. And he'll be like, go back to your bunk or whatever. But what happened, so the next time, they, they wouldn't let us smoke for a month because somebody did something in the dorm. Like, you know, it was a fight or something because fights, they lose their minds. If, if two dudes fight in this program, that's why there's no fighting in the shop. So if you have a fight with somebody, they lose their mind. They make the whole dorm pay for it, like, for a month. You have no smoke break. You have no wreck. Because they'll give you, like, 10 minutes of wreck a day. You'll play, a, you'll play, like, football. So they'll have you playing flag football for about a half hour, then you come back. And they have a championship game and everything. Then one time I was laughing in a position of attention, because when you're in a position of attention, 
you can't say nothing. So it's a real military program. You know, one day I was laughing, and, and one of the drill instructors heard me laughing and said, Joe Keeler, you out of the playoffs. Wouldn't let me. And my team was in the playoffs, like, for the football, flag football. And that was, like, our, our way out mentally, you know, because playing football, they let you do that. And you have this little tournament throughout, throughout the six months you're there, and you play for a championship, play for a little ribbon or whatever. But it was, you know, you didn't have nothing else to look forward to, so. When they took that, you know, it, it was these little mind games they played on you. Was, was, I'm going to shut it down there. We'll probably talk about that later when, when I start bringing up situations that happened in my life. When I, so when I got out of shock and I got saved, when I got to work, some situations that happened at my job, I can, I can relate 100% to some of the incidents, incidences that happened in shock. So shock teaches you how to be a better criminal or a better person. And like I said before, it made me a whole better person. We could go on about the about the the, print, um, the little things they did to help you deal with society and people in society and you know when people bump into you on the train you don't go all off because you know it's just a bump you know you know consequences would be a little more if you hit that person so anyway stuff like that that's what that's what teaches you how to be productive in society like all these little mind games and shots and they was I'm, I'm guessing the drill some drill instructor must have understood how it changed his life when he was in the Army or something. But anyway, we'll find that out later, too. So I want to be in that position three times. And every, all three times, one of the other, a different drill instructor came and saved me, which doesn't happen. So anyway, I want to graduate, and, you know. And at the end of graduation, you hate them guys when you first meet them. But then when you graduate, it's this big ceremony, man. You do this monkey drill, and I'll explain what that is later on. And if you've been in the Army or anything, you'll understand, like, you'd be like, you do this fly <laughs> march, you know. You be in lines. It, it's, it's a lot of y'all. You yelling, but anyway. But how yeah. many? How, yeah. And how many people were in shock? Like, because I know you said if they had playoffs, then that means it had to be like a lot of, you know. So there's six dorms. So to a six month program, you stay in the dorms. It's like two, four, six. It's like six platoons of thirty people a piece, or something like that. Like thirty. That, that's we start the program. But at the end of the program, my, my I, about twelve people graduate out of mine. Some dorms had six people graduate out of 30. That's how hard this program is. And those six people will be up there. And when they graduate, all the other dorms that come in, you know, because if you, if you get the sixth dorm, if you get the so sixth one, so it had to be six platoons because it's a new platoon come in. Like if, if I'm every month, you know, a new platoon comes in because your, your platoon moves to dorm A, to dorm B, and then there's somebody else will be an A, B. So these, these guys will see, but when you get the D doing, it's, it's unbelievable. You are so, um, like, disciplined. If you make it out of there, you can see the change from when you came in because you look at the other kids. As you're doing your, as you're doing your drills, you look at how, how young and how they look, and, and they look busted. So, but, but, you know, they, they, and you know what they're going to be going through. Okay. So, so only, yeah, so it's only a lot. Like 12 yeah, yeah. Out of 30, but, but only 12 out of 30 graduated. That's, that's it. Okay. Uh, out of my, out of my out platoon. Out of your third. So say out of a, out of your out platoon. Out of my platoon. So everybody starts with 30. And at, so, like I said, some platoons graduate six people because cause it'd be only six people left after you. Because it's a real hard program. It, 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 it ain't nothing like, I don't, I think the whole world should go through shock. Like, like you should have bad CEOs go through shock so they can understand people and they can, Anyway. Okay, so you and your you and your eleven other platoon mates graduated, and then right. you graduated, and then did you go home the next day on your birthday, or how did that? I know you went home Yo, on your birthday. You go home. You go. To, you go to. I signed up. So now shock had me so shook. Right, I, I was living with this girl in Brownsville, and when, when I when I went upstate, but I think she was cheating on me when I came home. I don't want to say her name. I think I was scheduled to go to her house. But then, oh, no, no, I know what happened. I signed up as a homeless person, so I wouldn't have to go back to Brownsville. Like, you literally grow up in that program because then all the stuff you really thought you wanted to do when you came home, by the time you graduate, all you want to do is, 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 like, make amends for some reason. Oh, you got to learn the 12 steps, even though you're not an alcoholic. You got to learn some other, this other 12, this other thing. And all you want to do when you get home is is just show people like like I didn't that wasn't me a long time ago you know you just want to show people that I'm I'm fly like I'm fly without the clothes I'm fly because I'm kind or something like you wanna you wanna make a mark 
I'm telling you, I wanted to be like Malcolm X. I, I swear, I thought I thought I was going. I thought I was going to be marching in the hood, and that, that still might happen. So, because you know, I'm still on fire from shock, but I just don't work out like that no more. Yeah. Oh, what, what, what was the question again? So now, okay, so you came, so you signed up as a homeless person, and then you came right. somewhere to where you saw um, so, Adrian, Adrian. That she invited. So I signed there. up as a homeless person, right? And I'm in this halfway house, right? So I'm, I got my daughter is on my mind. This is, this is the thing. Right, I I might have, I had two little girls, so it was bugged out that I didn't. I think I said this in my other episode. Yeah, so what changed me up there was thinking about them in a circle, you know, and lying to the damn to their teachers saying my father's in a in a in a he's away in a camp or some shit. So all right, this lady named Miss, the name um Adrian, which was which was my other daughter's cousin. She was going to, um, I forgot the name the CCC was before this. She was, anyway, she was a church. She, she wasn't a church church girl, but she was going to that church because she, she grew up with the pastor's wife or something like that. And so she used to, when I, in my husband's days, she used to try to get me to go to church. And I actually visited their church in the 80s before I changed. And, but I didn't hear nothing he said. I just was doing it for Adrian. She asked me like one time. She ain't really pressuring me to go to no church or nothing. But when I came home, that's all I thought about was her. And I said, Joe, um, you know, I want to go to church Sunday. And she, you know, she was probably excited because now that's how I am now. A friend of mine come from jail said, hey, Gordy, <laughs> um, yeah, I want to go to church. I would be excited, you know. So I can't, mm-hmm. I didn't know how deep it was when, um, when um, she, um, I didn't know how deep it was when she, when, I didn't know how deep it was when she said, um, you know, when I was asking her that, but she was so excited. But when I got there, I just wanted to go there, you know, just to say I did it. I didn't know nothing about getting saved. I didn't know nothing about Christ. I didn't know nothing about God and all that. I thought church was just a gimmick and all that. So, but I go to I go to my baby mother. I tell her, you no, know, I, I called um, Rosie, and Rosie says, told Asia. Asia said, meet her there on Sunday. Meet her at the house on Sunday. She'd bring me to church. So she brought me to C- CLC. It was on Linda Boulevard. I didn't hear nothing this guy was talking about. And then at the end of the service, he was like, if you want to become a man today, literally, that's what he said. He said, if you want, he didn't say nothing about God. I mean, he probably was talking about God through the whole, through the whole service. But he, mm. he, um, he said, if you want to become a man today, you can come up here and give your life to Christ or something like that. He was doing an altar call that I know that's, that's mm. what it is now. But. So I'm standing in the aisle, right? And I'm like, oh, man, this dude, he, who he? I'm I was like, all right, this church is over. I'm getting ready. I want to leave. But Adrian is waiting for them to finish this altar call. So he's, like, prolonging the altar call. He's like, yes, yeah, one more. People was up in the front. People had walked out of their seats and went to the front. And he was like, there's one more y'all out there. There's one more y'all out there. But he just kept saying that. And I ain't see nobody walking. Right? I'm like, dude, you tripping. Like, in my mind, you know, because I just came home. You know, I came home Friday. So I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, dang, man, I, this is why I don't like church. They taking all long. Let's just, you know, why it ain't over. He's still doing it, right? It seemed like an hour to me. It probably was only five minutes because now that when I see people get saved, I'll be so happy to see them. But, I, but so I, in my mind, I'm going, I know he's not talking to me because he don't know me from nowhere. And Adrian didn't know I was coming to church today, you know. It was Sunday I called, but I wound up leaving my seat and going up. So an Asian, I think, had their eyes closed because they was praying. They probably was praying for me. So I walked up there. I don't even know what made me leave my seat. I know this is going to sound crazy to some of my friends, but listen, this is what happened. I can't, I can't change the damn story, but okay, so I'm in front of him now. I'm right in front of this dude. He's like, today, you became a man. You know, the dude looked right at me, and I was just, and I've never heard that. And the man part is what got me. You know, it's like, yo, I've never even thought about it, but I knew I had these two girls, and I wanted to, and then a man, it sounded so, sounded so raw, like, yo, today you, be, mm. he said, today you became a man. Now, mind you, he said, you won't leave the church with wings. You're going to mess up or whatever. He gave us a little spill. We leave church, right? And in my mind, I ain't paying it no mind. Oh, no, we leave church, and me and Adrian and um, Sharon are walking out the church, God bless her, and we walking out the church, and... It's a big crowd outside. It's a red Ferrari, and um, it's a big crowd by. So we looking at, oh shit, who car is this? Oh shit, who car is this? And um, we like, yo, 
Oh, then Mike and Mike Tyson and Uwe jumps out of the jumps out of the side, jumps out from around the um, cars and be like, "Yo, what's up? You in church punk?" They start digging on me right there, but it's a crowd. It's a big crowd, like watching all this, right? So the crowd started forming, getting bigger. Then, then more people start coming. Now, listen, I just got to say, Mike Tyson is outside the freaking thing. Now, I grew up with him, but. But he was heavyweight champ of the world at this time. He was all over the place, you know. And him and my best friend, Uwe, is outside the church. It's it's so crazy that if you think about it now, and then it's like a bunch of people, like, yo, and now when I look back at it, it's like I was the, um, I'm the chosen one. Like, and and this, this big crowd is outside for me. So it's crazy. But anyway. So Mike and them come out. They say, yo, man, that shit don't work. I'm, I'm, I just said that curse because I wanted to really, that's what really happened. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So I was like, whatever. You know, I was like, what? What? Adrian, I'm like, yo, he just got saved. Da, da. And I'm like, Adrian, chill out. You ain't got to, you know, I went to church with you. You know what I mean? Chill out. So fast forward. I leave with Mike and them. It's a little side seat. It's a little back seat in a, in a Ferrari that you can put your legs up and you can fit in. I jumped in the back of that crowd is going bananas. <laughs> the crowd is like, oh, you know, they like you just won the championship. Pick. Like I, I just won the championship. Yo, what unbelievable, man. Yeah, man, unbelievable. So the crowd is going crazy. But you know, I'm not thinking about it like in a spiritual sense. I'm just like, I'm just, you know, happy Mike and them, Mike and them taking me out. So mm-hmm. now, mind you, when Mike said that, how would you say, Mia? I said the angels rejoicing. They always say angels rejoice when somebody gets saved. Oh, yeah. So we're in the car. Yo, these dudes take me shopping, give me money. We take pictures. We're on the, we taking pictures. We're on 42nd Street hanging out. The, you know, people going crazy when we driving with the top. We got the Ferrari. Yo, it's crazy out there. Every place we go, it's like a crowd. We went to shop. We, we, went, to, we went shopping. It's crowd outside. All this, like... All day we hung out. They dropped me off back at like 10 o'clock at night. I go back in the halfway house. I think I had 11 o'clock curfew at the time. Go back in the halfway house. I got pictures of Mike. I got money. I got new clothes. And mad flicks. My bunkies is going crazy. Like, what? Yo. And, and when I lay down, you look at all the stuff I got. And in my head, I'm going, this dude said, that S don't work. And I'm looking mm. at that, getting safe. And, yo. Literally, man, my first year of being saved was like, like it was, I didn't start working for Mike to like, so that I came home in 90. I started working for Mike in 95, five years later, because I wasn't, five, after that day, I didn't see Mike. I was on a quest to get a job, go back to school, and do all of this stuff. Now, the story, yo, we're not going to talk about the, the, I finally wound up to get a job with Mike. He wound up going to jail. I wound up going to college. So y'all got to listen to these stories because it's going to get crazy now because if you think about it, look, Mia, you talking, I started, I started hanging out with my kids, like literally, like went and got my daughters, put them together. They ain't never met. Mia was six. Janae was three. Brought them together. And, yo, I started taking them out on weekends on the train. Like I would go get them from their mother's house. I told their mothers, like, listen, I ain't got no money and I ain't hustling no more. So mm. I'm going to come pick them up when I can. Um, right. If you wanna, if you wanna donate to us going out, that's cool. I'm not gonna ask you for nothing, but I'm coming to get my daughters. And they yeah. was down with me. It's crazy that they bought into that shit. Never took me to court. Never said pay child support. Even when I got my job, never said do that. My, Wendy was a trooper. Rosie, Rosie was like Rosie and my my girlfriend at the time was hanging out. It was crazy. My other baby mother was hanging out. It's like I was really connecting the hood, really bringing this. This good, this good energy back to the hood, man. It felt so good. Then my daughter, then my daughter, you, Mia would, would say, Daddy, can I bring my friend? And Tiffany started hanging out. So, right, okay. we got a and lot to like Yeah. We do, we do. And that's what we're going to talk about on the next podcast. So, yeah, we, we got to hit. But and y'all now... got to know. I'm going to just hit them with these three things. We was riding the train. We was dropping everybody off. I made sure everybody got the door-to-door service. Everybody who, who parents who, who I took their kids, I made sure their mother saw me drop them off. And then we got a truck, we got a Lexus Jeep. But anyway, that's we that was that was years after we was on the train. Right, right, right. Like, we ain't even get to yeah, that. Was, we ain't even get to that yet. We ain't even get to we that. Just, we, we was on the we train. We didn't even get to the drop top. 
when you had it when you had us in the drop top when you first was picking us up. No, but gym. when we used to, when we when we went to see Janae, you had a drop top because you took me in a car. I think it was a that blue. That was before blue. the. That was before. No, all right. So Uwe. That was Uwe before the blue. That was before the BMW. I had a drop top car when I picked y'all up. I don't remember which car. We got to talk Maybe about that. Maybe it was Uwe's. Maybe it was Uwe's, but yeah. But I remember when I went to meet Janae, it was a drop top car. Then you used to take us to Brownsville when you was working out. But we're going to get into that on yep. the next podcast. So now I'm going to be able to tell some of the stories, you know, because right, I can tell right, from my right. perspective you definitely... on the next podcast when, when you started taking us out. All right, y'all. So y'all know we have to highlight and celebrate a person every day from the project. So... Um, last week we had Rosie, and this week we would like to celebrate the journey. Adrian Sally. Yo, we giving a big shout out to Adrian, big Adrian Sally. Wow, what Adrian heard? Sally. Adrian, Adrian brought all of we us. We don't to know the what we know. God had me so. in His plans, but we don't know how quick, and we don't know how to win. Uh, we don't know. We're not even gonna think about what would happen. Even though I think God, yeah. you know, plans me to be this person, but shoot, Adrian mm-hmm. Sally stepped up. Trust and believe that. Right, right. So today we celebrate Adrian. So yeah, thank you for Adrian. introducing us all. Sharon. I God bless you, I Rosie. Can bless you. See through, through, through Adrian eventually, you know, like through you, and you came through Adrian. So yes, that's our person of the week. Thank you for listening to another episode of Parables from the Projects. Uh, we also thank you for, look, sharing with a friend. We thank you for leaving a review on iTunes. We thank you for sharing on social media. We thank you also to everybody in the NYC area and beyond that will be in NYC uh, on August 19th. We definitely would love to see you in the building. Um, if you would like to sponsor our event or our podcast, please email us at projectparables at gmail.com because we are, you know, going to be looking for sponsors for the event and for the podcast. So just hit us up. I'm on social media at Mia underscore Hall 19 on all social platforms. Uh, my dad at Gorgeous Gordy 9. And you can follow at Parables from the Project on Instagram. Hey, dad, you got any other shout outs, any other Nuggets you want to share? Nuggets I just want to share. Yo, listen, life is to live. No, don't ever condemn yourself for doing something bad. Don't ever think you less than somebody else. We are all the same people. We are all the same, man. And once you understand that all of the, the ground, the buildings, the bridges, the tunnels, the cars, the parties, the music, all that's for you to enjoy this, this place you're in. Don't think that you got to be godly means being boring. Don't ever think that. Just don't think that godly. Don't think because you, 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 you never cursed in your life you God. Just know, man, you can have fun with life. You can have fun with life because everything is out here for us to live, not to just hold on to and... Oh. <laughs> anyway, yeah, life is to live. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all, we'll holler at you next week. the last call, thinking that I know you're not sure, make a long stop, ready or not, I see you but I need to know more, what you wanna do, cause I know we didn't dance, but I saw you watching on the dance floor, we be at the exit door, and maybe we could talk some more, oh yeah, you stand beside me, you're watching me, and you feel it, I feel
Right. So today we celebrate Adrienne. So yeah, thank you for Adrian. introducing us all. So I, God bless you, I Rosie. Can bless you. See through 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 Adrian eventually, you know, like through you and you came through Adrian. So yes, that's our person of the week. All right, Josh. So thank you for joining us, man. We uh, thank you for listening to another episode of Parables from the Project. Uh, we also thank you for. Look, sharing with a friend. We thank you for leaving a review on iTunes. We thank you for sharing on social media. We thank you also to everybody in the NYC area and beyond that will be in NYC uh, on August 19th. We definitely would love to see you in the building. Um, If you would like to sponsor our event or our podcast, please email us at projectparables at gmail.com because we are you know, going to be looking for sponsors for the event and for the podcast. So just hit us up. I'm on social media at Mia underscore Hall 19 on all social platforms. Uh, my dad at Gorgeous Gordy 9. And you can follow at Parables from the Project on Instagram. Whew. Until next time. <laughs> Till yeah, next time, me. y'all. Shout out. Any any uh-huh. other Daddy got any other shout outs, any other nuggets you wanna share? Um, nuggets I just wanna share, yo, listen. Life is to live. Yo, I'm telling y'all, life is to live. No don't ever condemn yourself for doing something bad. Don't ever think you less than somebody else. We are all the same people. We are all the same, man. And once you understand that all of the, the ground, the buildings, the bridges, the tunnels, the cars, the parties, the music, all that's for you to enjoy this, this place you're in. Don't think that you gotta be you got you you gotta be godly means being born. Don't ever think that. <laughs> Just don't think that godly just because you, 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 you wear a certain outfit you godly. Don't think because you, 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 you never cursed in your life, you God. Just know, man, you can have fun with life. You know what I'm saying? You can have fun with life because everything is out here for us to live, not to just hold on to and... Oh. <laughs> anyway, yeah, yeah. Life is to live. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all, we'll holler at you next week. Right, so today we celebrate Adrienne. So, yeah, thank you for introducing us all. God bless you, Rosie. I can see through through, through Adrienne eventually, you know, like through you, and you came through Adrienne. So, yes, that's our person of the week. All right, Josh, so thank you for joining us, man. We uh, thank you for listening to another episode of Parables from the Project. Uh, We also thank you for... Look, sharing with a friend, we thank you for leaving a review on iTunes. We thank you for sharing on social media. We thank you also to everybody in the NYC area and beyond that will be in NYC uh, on August 19th. We definitely would love to see you in the building. Um, If you would like to sponsor our event or our podcast, please email us at projectparables at gmail.com because we are you know, going to be looking for sponsors for the event and for the podcast. So just hit us up. I'm on social media at Mia underscore Hall 19 on all social platforms. Uh, My dad at Gorgeous Gordy 9. And you can follow at Parables from the Project on Instagram. Whew. Until next time. (laughs) Till next time, y'all. Any any uh-huh. other Daddy got any other shout outs, any other nuggets you wanna share? Um, nuggets I just wanna share, yo, listen. Life is to live. <laughs> yo, I'm telling y'all, life is to live. No don't ever condemn yourself for doing something bad. Don't ever think you less than somebody else. We are all 
the same people. We are all the same, man. And once you understand that all of the, the ground, the buildings, the bridges, the tunnels, the cars, the parties, the music, all that's for you to enjoy this, this place you're in. Don't think that you gotta be, you got you got you gotta be godly means being born. Don't ever think that. <laughs> just don't think that godly. Just because you 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 wear a certain outfit, you godly. Don't think because you 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 never cursed in your life, you godly. Just know, man, you can have fun with life. You know what I'm saying? You can have fun with life because everything is out here for us to live, not to just hold on to and. Oh. <laughs> anyway, yeah, yeah. Life is to live. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all. We'll holler at you next week. Right. So today we celebrate Adrian. So, yeah, thank you for Adrian. introducing us all. Yeah. I, God bless you, I Rosie. I can see through, through, through Adrian eventually, you know, like through you, and you came through Adrian. So, yes, that's our person of the week. All right, y'all. So thank you for joining us, man. We uh, thank you for listening to another episode of Parables from the Project. Uh, we also thank you for, look, sharing with a friend. We thank you for leaving a review on iTunes. We thank you for sharing on social media. We thank you also to everybody in the NYC area and beyond that will be in NYC uh, on August 19th. We definitely would love to see you in the building. Um, if you would like to sponsor our event or our podcast, please email us at projectparables at gmail.com because we are, you know, going to be looking for sponsors for the event and for the podcast. So just hit us up. I'm on social media at Mia underscore Hall 19 on all social platforms. Uh, my dad at Gorgeous Gordy 9. And you can follow at Parables from the Project on Instagram. Whew. Until next time. <laughs> Till next time, any y'all. Shout out? Any, any huh? other? Daddy, you got any other shout outs? Any other? Nuggets you want to share? Um, nuggets I just want to share. Yo, listen. Life is to live. Yo, I'm telling y'all, life is to live. No, don't ever condemn yourself for doing something bad. Don't ever think you less than somebody else. We are all the same people. We are all the same, man. And once you understand that all of the, the ground, the buildings, the bridges, the tunnels, the cars, the parties, the music, all that's for you to enjoy this, this place you're in. Don't think that you gotta be, you got you you gotta be godly means being born. Don't ever think that. <laughs> just don't think that godly, just because you 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 wear a certain outfit, you godly. Don't think because you 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 never cursed in your life, you godly. Just know, man, you can have fun with life. You know what I'm saying? You can have fun with life because everything is out here for us to live, not to just hold on to and... Oh. <laughs> anyway.